Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. So uh, my presentation is mainly about the uh, management options and approaches for alfalfa weevil. This is uh, one of the uh, most serious pests for alfalfa in our system. And this is like a more of a winter springtime uh, uh, insect pest and it can uh, damage the yield a lot. And it can, it's, you know, in the West, mostly like in many of other uh, hay alfalfa system, this is the most yield destructive uh, pest there. Uh, the insects start to being uh, in our system here, start to being active in the winter during this much of time here. Uh, the adult will come out and they will start laying egg and they insert the egg inside the stem as this first photo on the top left here showing some of these marble uh, color eggs inside the stem. This egg will hatch and then become larva like this one small one and then getting bigger with the feeding. And this is the, uh, the stage that causing a lot of the damage or like all of most of them here. Uh, later on in the season, uh, this one, like this one here, and from there, uh, either it will be put in a cocoon, like the one on the right top here, or um, without cocoon like the one in the uh, lower left here and then this become an adult and this adult will become uh, uh, not active during the summer time. So this is the life cycle for this uh, insect here. <clears throat> As I said, this insect can do a lot of damage mainly by feeding on the leaflet of the alfalfa and you can see here some of our trials showing the difference between uh, some species some protected from the damage of this insect and the others that are not. And the feeding here is, uh, as I said, mostly uh, the feeding is uh, from uh, the larval stage and you can see here some of the feedings uh, of, of, of this larva. And also the adult can feed a little bit on the stem and a little bit on the leaflet before inserting eggs. And this is, could be a sign that you have this problem or you have this insect there. So we, we, we normally like sample this insect uh, and we start like sweeping the, uh, the fields uh, during like the uh, start of the winter time. And the older threshold was like set as 15 to 20 larva per sweep. And this wasn't practical at all. And we have like many conversations with many of you. And this is some of the uh, feedback that we are getting from you early on, like uh, when we started this project, we can't wait to have this number. If I get that much, we will I'll have a white alfalfa and so on. So we, we study like the uh, economic threshold was like uh, have been Started not started since the 1975, and we manipulated the population of these insects at different plot uh, experiment at MAC over the years, uh, using different uh, insecticide application based on their efficacy and their like uh, performance. The, the, the purpose here is to have different densities of uh, this population and compare it to the yield, and we did that for many years, and this is like the overall. Um, uh, relationship between the larval population and the fresh cut or like the fresh cut yield as we get from this experiment. Uh, keep in mind here that the population of the larva here, mostly the large larva, the larva that after the surgeon stars. This is like a year after year relationship that's almost similar here and has some uh, different range or like a range of this large larva that we set it, it's almost like you can get some economic damage on a level between one to five larva uh, at the most depend on the price of the hay. As I said, like uh, in your sweep net, you can get a whole range of insect here. We are focusing on uh, this first four on the right. This is the larva here of this alfalfa weevil. And our threshold number is based on the large larva. This is more of like the big size larva when you mostly like have this a visible uh, dorsal or back line. Uh, and this is the, the larva that we base our, our threshold on it. 
some of the uh, uh, information that we had and all of these information that we have are now uh, 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 under publication with a paper that we submitted. But uh, for our practicality, we did some, you know, scenarios of what we can uh, what we can get. So some of the information that uh, we have here depend on three factors. The price of hay per ton as like in this column here, the left column, how much we can, uh, it will cost us for the treatment and that includes the price of the chemical and uh, the fuel and labor and everything. And the population itself, how many of these larvae we can found in the sweep net. And here we're talking about the large larvae. If we have a high uh, price for the hay, we assume that we will have lower uh, number of larvae that can make a damage. And here, if you have like uh, in our example here, if you have uh, a hay that can uh, get you like 250 or more per ton, and the cost of treatment is about $30. One larva, one large larva per sweep can make significant damage here. Uh, on the other hand, if you have like uh, 200 or less uh, in terms of like the number uh, or like the price of the hay, maybe two larva, large larva per sweep can make significant damage here or economic damage. And the, the number uh, would go higher. You can get like three large larva that can make economic damage if your hay price here is about 104, 260. And you can like go four of these larva per sweep if your price at 130 to 140 dollar per ton. All of this is one only one scenario when you have the cost of treatment at 30 dollar, as mentioned here. But we have many scenarios, and all of these scenarios, as we said, is based on this large larva. So to cover all of these scenarios, and they have like some tools for us to use to determine whether we have this information or not we have uh, what we call our Weevil calculator. And this is here, like, a, 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 it's almost like an app that you can use. And this is here, the website that you can go there and uh, you can like access this, uh, this app. And here is like a snapshot of what we can uh, see on this app. You, you will have like a bar here and that represents the price of the hay uh, as uh, dollar per ton. And you can like move this like circle uh, on this bar. Here we are having it as this snapshot at $200 uh, of uh, hay ton, per, uh, I'm sorry, of, of uh, hay per ton. And you can like also adjust the price of the cost of treatment as dollar per acre. And we are here having it at $29 uh, per acre, including everything. And that's give you a decision here. You should be seeing 2.5 large larva per sweep, per 108 sweep to do uh, or to justify any kind of uh, chemical or any kind of management or control for this entity here. So this app here is like more of our practical way to uh, figure how we can uh, approach this decision and we can have our decision uh, in a snapshot or like very quick, uh, very quick manner. And uh, I know some of you are using this tool here. This is like quite easy tool and it will it is based on like local information. This is the information we are getting from here. And it was uh, verified by uh, many other uh, trials that we did over the years. So um, uh, I have been like in, uh, working with many of you to use this tool and prove to be uh, a really good tool to use. The, the other problem that we are facing with this insect is the, uh, the uh, uh, chemical arsenal available to, uh, to control it because there is not much uh, things that we can do with this insect. We can like, uh, as I discussed with you before, we can adjust the time of uh, control if we are applying some chemical insecticide. We would like to go early, as early as we can detect the large larva and have our, uh, uh, our uh, spray. Because the early we can go, we will like mostly uh, kill majority of the insects that's available and that will help us start the season clean without much of these 
uh, insect in the field. If we let it go, like many cases that we saw last year, we might end up with a population that will not be uh, under any control by using any of the chemicals available because the best chemical in these uh, arsenals that we have can give us maybe like 80, 85% uh, mortality. That's good if we don't have much in the field, we don't have much insect in the field. But if we have a lot of these larvae in the field, the remaining like 20 or 15% would be like quite a lot for this insect to make damage, economic damage uh, uh, to the hay uh, yield there. So saying that, if we look at our option in terms of the active ingredient for alfalfa weevil control, we will find that we don't have much option. We have maybe like um, pyrethroids and like the, one of them, one of them that we are using a lot and it serves double purpose for the weevil and the aphid is warrior, the lambda silasrin. And we have also some other pyrethroid as, as well, like Mustang or Pacephroids. Uh, we had, or we used to have like organophosphate, which is like Lorspan. Lorspan advanced is the probiophos, and we know this product is, is facing out. Might be like what you have right now is what you, could be available for you. And we have the index carb, and this is mainly like steward. This is more leaning toward uh, a selective chemistry here. And that's the options that we have. That's it, three active ingredients. One of them is almost gone. And we have the pyrethroid and we have a lot of challenges warrior because the ways that have been used for many years. And we have only another active ingredient. There is some that might be coming in the pipeline. I'm working on uh, uh, another active ingredient that might be uh, available, but we don't know when. And we know that it's quite hard to register something in alfalfa. So we need to be good stewards for our uh, chemicals that's available for us and not to use them without you know, discretion. And we, we need to justify using them by uh, depending on the uh, economic threshold and uh, uh, all other factors. We have been uh, hearing about a lot of reports of some uh, resistance or less than good performance of uh, the Lambda Celestrin or the Warrior II uh, for some years now. And we are following this uh, uh, product and the efficacy for many years. It's still working in our system. It's still working in our efficacy trials. Uh, it's still working with uh, many of our PCAs and growers that I'm uh, dealing with, but in some cases it is not. And we know that resistance starts locally and then it spreads and we have these signs. And we have these signs coming from other systems, especially like from Northern California and some other Northern states where this insect has multiple generations and they are using this chemical multiple times against them. And maybe that's the reason they have the resistance there. And our system here in Arizona, mostly we don't have this resistance showed yet, but in some, in some places that I'm aware of, especially like closer to California border, we have some less than good performance for this for this chemical. We started like this project uh, to monitor the resistance for uh, uh, Warrior II or uh, Lambda Silasrin for uh, since 2018-19, uh, and we have this result to share from this first year, and we have also some results that we are working on right now. But for the first year in 2019, we collected population from many places and many sites here in Arizona, in Maricopa, Scottsdale, Tanapa, Welton near Yuma and Austin in, uh, in Parker Valley. And we have some from California as well as some other state, neighboring states. Some of our colleagues sent us some of this uh, population uh, to monitor them and to see if we have any signs against uh, um, or showing resistance to this uh, product. And the assay we did in our lab here is uh, was like um, feeding and um, assay and mostly like treating the leaflet of alfalfa with different concentration of uh, the active ingredient and then make them on these cups and put some of these uh, certain star larvae in them and monitor them for 
24 and 48 hours to figure out which of them is dead or like close to dead and which of them is still alive. The overall results are here in this, uh, in this uh, graph here. And if you look at it, we have this like concentration on the X axis here. This is the dose as part per million. And uh, like the, 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 the dose or the concentration that's close to the active uh, uh, rate is this one, is the 500 parts per million. And you can see after like 48 hours, it can give us like almost 95% mortality. That's great, right? But keep in mind, like this is the overall result. This is not a location by location. This is the result from everywhere. But if we like mince this data a little bit and we go like location by location, this is what we, what we have here. And it's a little bit busy uh, graph, but this is mostly like the same graph that we saw in the past, but for different location. So each of these graphs have this different color bar, each of them is the rate or the loss of uh, uh, the chemical that we use. So as you can see, like we have some places where it is quite good, like, and they are mostly here in Arizona, like you have here in the Wilton area and in Maricopa and even like uh, Holtville, California, you have like the, the, the bar that you represent, the 500 is the blue bar here. and this is reaching like almost 100%. This is really good news for this location, right? But on the other hand, we have some, you know, troubling location where like we don't get even like 60 or maybe 65% like here in Eureka, California. This is in the Intermountain area in Northern California. But also we have some in other states like in Texas here. Again, we have not as good as the remaining. And even like some neighboring area, like here in Plies, California, you just across the border, it's similar condition of low desert, a low desert environment like ours here in Arizona. And you can see like the performance here in the 70s. And this is, this is, this is not a good sign. And as I said, this is like mostly in 2019. And in 2020, we did some uh, of this monitoring too. And I can tell you it's similar result, but we, we start to get even like uh, more worrying uh, results from places close to Yuma. And this is, as I said, this is the area that close to Plies here. And this is maybe like a shifting population or something that's going on here. But we have good um, management or control using this uh, warrior two or lambda silasrin active ingredient in some areas, but in some others it's not. And this makes, again, this is a sign of uh, resistance here. Um, whether it's because this product is used for a long time or because it's not used when it should be or any other factors, we have this and we need to be as good steward to using this chemical as possible so we can elongate the time that we can use this uh, product to as much as we can. Saying that we have many other ways that we can manage and control alfalfa weevil and some other uh, insect and alfalfa also because we are working in a more of a, a, a landscape system here. We have culture of control. Some resistant varieties, especially like for aphid might help a little bit. So we don't use as much chemical on aphid, which is like in many times, like in the case in warrior, you can use them on both of aphid and the, um, and the weevil and that could help in delaying any of these resistance and give us, you know, another tool in the IPM arsenal that we have. Strip cutting is, 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 is very important. You can just leave strip here and it will help working as refugee for uh, the um, uh, natural enemies. And these are good uh, practice that will help the biological control here. Early harvest also, also, also could work in mitigating the population of especially alfalfa weevil. If you have this number here, and it's not, and it's about to approach the threshold, the economic threshold, but it's not there yet, and you can har uh, harvest early, that could be a good option. Think that you should be aware of, you need to clear your swaths as, as fast as possible, because this larva can eat under the windrow, 
and this is not good because it, it could eat not only the spots but can eat only the new uh, uh, growth of the uh, alfalfa that will um, give the uh, the following crop and this is not good if you leave them for a long time feeding under the sun. Proper irrigation also is uh, quite important to keep the plant healthy and to prevent some uh, signal that the plant give to some of the insects when they are not uh, irrigated quite well. We have a whole uh, array of the natural enemies that we would like to uh, give their, um, them a chance and that's mainly by using some of these selective insecticide when it's possible. I know it's not a lot of options in alfalfa, but we need to make sure that we are, when I have a chance, use selective insecticide to uh, help, help conserve these natural enemies that they help a lot uh, in this system. And with that, I'm done here and I would like to uh, thank you. And if you have any questions,